We've seen that Green's theorem, that Gauss's theorem, both have applications to estimating geometry from data points in dimension two, in dimension three, but something's missing. What about Stokes' theorem? Can we find a cool application of that to data? Oh yes, I think we can. Here's something that I've wanted to show you for a while. Consider the problem of estimating area, but not on the plane, but rather on a sphere. Let's say the surface of the Earth. Consider a really large region on the surface of the Earth. I don't know, something like India or maybe even Texas. How would you estimate the surface area of that region given a sequence of points on the boundary where you know the latitude and longitude? Well, let's think. Let's think in terms of spherical coordinates. Remember back from volume three, chapter 14, in 3D spherical coordinates, the solid angle two form, which is denoted d omega two, has the following form in the language of differential forms. d omega two is sine phi, d phi wedge, d theta. Now you might wanna go back and review your spherical coordinates. I've used this particular ordering, d phi wedge d theta, in order to get the orientation on the sphere correct so that you have an outward pointing normal. Now remember how this fits together with the volume form in 3D spherical coordinates. Remember that you've got that rho squared sine phi d rho d phi d theta. Well, to get the surface area form on a sphere of radius capital R, what you do is you replace rho with capital R and then you get rid of the d rho so that you get an area form instead of a volume form. This area form ds is r squared sine phi d phi wedge d theta. Now here's the big question. If we want to use Stokes theorem to approximate surface area based on a sequence of data points along the boundary, we need to know, is this two form really the derivative of a one form? Yes, yes it is. It's the derivative of minus r squared cosine phi d theta. Check that, see that that is true. And now we can use Stokes theorem. Why? If we want to compute the surface area of a region d on the sphere of radius capital R, then instead of doing that double integral, we can use Stokes theorem to integrate this one form, minus r squared cosine phi d theta over the boundary of d. And if that boundary is given by a sequence of points sampled along the boundary with an interpolated path, then we can integrate this one form over each of those path segments, just like we did when we were estimating area in the plane. But this time, we're going to get surface area on the sphere. Okay, so let's go ahead, let's do that. Let's integrate minus r squared cosine phi d theta over the ith segment gamma i. Now we're going to parametrize that segment between two incident data points. The first with coordinates theta one i, phi one i. The second with coordinates theta two i, phi two i. Let's use a parameter t and a straight line parameterization between those two, just like we did with points in the plane where t is gonna go from zero to one. Now what we're going to have to do is plug these values into that one form. So cosine of phi becomes cosine of quantity phi one i plus quantity phi two i minus phi one i times t. Then for d theta, we get theta two i minus theta one i times dt. I can pull the minus r squared out from that integral going from zero to one. I can also pull out the theta two minus theta one term because that's just a constant. We're integrating with respect to t. So how do we do that? Well, it kind of looks ugly, but look, we're integrating cosine of something times t. So that integral is really gonna be sine of that argument divided by the derivative of that with respect to t, that derivative being phi two minus phi one. 
Evaluating this as t goes from 0 to 1 gives us a nice answer. It's minus r squared times theta 2 minus theta 1 times sine phi 2 minus sine phi 1 all divided by phi 2 minus phi 1. Now each of these involves the ith data points, so to get the net surface area we need to take the sum of these as i goes from 1 to n, getting minus r squared times the sum theta 2 minus theta 1 times sine phi 2 minus sine phi 1 divided by phi 2 minus phi 1, all of those with i's. And wow, this is really cool. This, this kind of works. It gives you an approximation to the surface area of a region on the sphere. I wonder how well this works in practice. Hmm, there are a few complications here that I'm not going to go into. One question to get you started is, hmm, I wonder how this formula knows the difference between the region inside this boundary curve and the region outside this boundary curve. What if you have a really complicated domain? How do you tell? Hmm, I wonder if we've paid careful enough attention to the hypotheses of Stokes' theorem. You might want to think about that a little bit. But hey, I also wonder, what else could we do? I mean, we've seen some really cool applications of Green's theorem, of Gauss' theorem, and now of Stokes' theorem to problems of estimating geometry in dimensions 2 and 3. But of course, a lot of problems in data are higher dimensional. Can we get applications of Green, Gauss, Stokes, something like that, to higher dimensional data as well? Well, I think that would require learning some more math.